Hey Fly Tires, welcome back. I'm Matt, and thank you for stopping by the channel. Now I haven't tied a Mike Vala streamer in a while, and I really love tying his patterns. I mean, they're not always the easiest ones to tie, but they're some really beautiful, elegant streamers. So I'm going to tie one today, and oddly enough, this was not in his classic streamer fly box, but it was in his Tying the Founding Flies. This pattern is called the Llama. Now it was created by Miles Tortolo, a Menominee Indian from Wisconsin in the 1940s. And I did read that he likely got the fly from an old English pattern book, but it didn't become popular until Eric Leiser wrote about it in a 1973 article in Fly Fisher magazine called Tying the Llama and Why. Now I haven't read that article, but it sounds pretty interesting. Now, other than what I just told you and what I read in Mike Vala's book, I couldn't find any information out there on this thing, and I certainly couldn't find another video of it being tied. And I don't know why it has fallen out of favor in the last 40 or 50 years. It's really a cool looking pattern, and I know it's gonna look good in the water, and I think you're gonna like it. Let's give it a shot. So there you go, the llama. Pretty cool looking streamer. I'm gonna be tying this on a size eight, and I am using a 6X long streamer hook. This is a pretty long beast we got right here. And I want to put down a base of 70 denier black. You could certainly step it up to a 140 or even a 210 probably, but this is what I had spooled and uh, it'll work just fine. Okay, after you got your thread all the way back to the start of the bend, take a grizzly hen. And I'm gonna use uh, the long fibers right here for the tail and just a good chunk of them, maybe 15 or so feathers, or not feathers, but fibers here. How about that right there? There we go. I think that's gonna look good. And it's not a real short tail, it's not stubby. It's not terribly long, but I'd say it's a hook gap or a little bit bigger. Right there, okay. Now here is you gotta make a decision. Should I cut those off or can I bury them flat enough without getting a big lump in the back of, of this body? I'm gonna go ahead and cut them. You probably could get away with just burying them, but it was just easy enough to cut. Okay, so the next component is our tinsel. And I'm using a Mylar, Danville Mylar size 14, which is probably a medium. And if I'm doing a red or a black body, I like the gold to show. So I'm gonna catch it in with a gold toward the hook. And as few of wraps as you can get it, try to be economical with your thread wraps. Going back here, okay. And then big wraps up here. I'm trying to keep that body level, as level as possible. Now the next component is just some red floss. And as this is a 6X long hook, I'm gonna need about a good 12 inches or so of this. If you were gonna tie it on a 3X long, you probably wouldn't need as much, but yeah, this is gonna be a big long body. So I'm gonna just catch this in, take my thread up a little bit more, and then yeah, do that right there. And fairly, open but tight wraps going back. Okay, and I think that is going to work right there. Take the thread back up to the front where we're going to finish this body. And that is fairly smooth but um, we'll see how it turns out. I'm just going to put a half inch half hitch right there to keep my thread from moving around. Now take your time and wrap this thread up. And what I might end up doing is going all the way up and then halfway back and then back forward again if it starts to get a little uh, uneven on me. And remember, you can treat this this type floss just like you would a thread. If, it, if you need it to flatten out, just give it a little counterclockwise spin. And if you need it to cord up a little bit, you know, just spin it clockwise. So just take your time right here and then go up and then down and back a little bit if you need to.
that's one layer. And if I had enough floss out and it wasn't starting to fray on me, I'd probably be able to go all the way back and try to minimize that little bump right there. And I don't think I'm gonna have enough right here to go all the way back. So I'm just gonna put a, another uh, layer as far back as I think I can go and then take it back up to the front to catch it off. Okay, that got all the way back, but I'm gonna have to put some really wide open wraps to get it back up front because I've only got a couple of inches of this floss left and I'm starting to get to the, the frayed ends right there, you can see. But you know, that's gonna be okay because we've still got this this rib we're putting in and that'll let us hide you know several imperfections here for the most part that body is fairly smooth we do have let's see there's one stray fiber right there but I think we're gonna be able to, to compensate for any lumps with wrapping this rib so what you'll do next just Openly, open, evenly spaced wraps all the way up. So probably a little more red showing than gold. Okay, three wraps to secure that. And don't sweat it if the front of it is a little bit messy. Uh, this big hair wing we're gonna put on it is gonna hide a lot of the front half of this, this fly, really. So I'm gonna go ahead and bury that in, take my thread back just a little bit, tighten it up. Probably need to take it back right to about right there because it is a pretty big wing we're putting on this thing. And for the wing, groundhog, woodchuck, this stuff right here, pretty cool fur to work with. So cut out a pretty big piece looking like this right here, but do not pull out all that guard hair. That's part of the fly. So get your length to about the back of that tail, and then when you're ready to tie it in, I'll pull it pretty tight, hold it pretty tight with my material hand, and you might can pull a little bit of this fuzz out, but you don't want to pull all that guard hair out. So what we're gonna have to do right here, and this is a little bit tricky, I wanna put uh, kind of a loose wrap right here. It's a pinch wrap and it's loose. Now I'm pulling tight up. And I haven't really put any real tight wraps on it because I'm wanting to make sure it doesn't spin on me. Because uh, it will still spin even after three or four good tight wraps if you're not careful. But what I will do here, and I do this with bucktails a lot of times as well, I will put a thread wrap underneath it and don't come all the way back down, but come underneath it again. So I have one complete wrap right here that is just around that hair. And that's gonna, for the most part, keep it from spinning around. Now we can put some tighter wraps to really lock this in. And now here's another trick on this. See, I got a little bit right there. We might have some cleanup. But when you're trimming this, I will oftentimes trim it in a not just one big whack. I'll do it in a few uh, snips. That way, you know, you don't jostle your, your wing around too much. Okay, now, if you've taken your time doing that, just use some thread wraps to try to get a taper going right here. And it's a big head, and it's a big head by design. You know, a lot of people will put eyes on them, or a lot of them that you'll see will have eyes. So I'm just trying to make a smooth taper right here. And I'm gonna catch in the rest of that feather that I used for the tail. So how long do we want it? Uh, maybe not that long. So go a little bit up on it, strip some of the the fibers off, get you a tie-in point like that right there. Now I'm gonna catch it in with the concave side toward the hook. Several wraps right here, leave my thread hanging where I'm going to stop wrapping this hackle. 
and then we're still gonna have room to build a big head in front of that hackle. So I might need to go back a turn right there. And I don't have a whole lot to work with, so I'm gonna take my hackle pliers right here and then just preen these back as I spin it around. And probably three or four wraps should work for you. Okay, I think that's gonna be enough. I'm gonna put two wraps to catch this in and then snip off this excess up here. Still pretty bushy looking right there, but we're gonna clean that up just a little bit. I'm gonna pull these back and a few wraps over the front of this, this hackle to get it to lay back a little bit. And now this is where using a, a 210 or a thicker thread would really come in handy because you gotta build a pretty big head and it's the kind of head that you can paint a big white eye on it. I'm not gonna do that, but you still kinda of want a big big head that you can gloss and harden up and make it nice and shiny. Okay, I got a few fibers of my thread that came out right there, but I think we're fine. Let's go ahead and put a whip finish on it and then some head cement. And you know what? I'm gonna go ahead and add a few more wraps and then do another whip finish. And one of the most fun parts about these streamers, is just a big glob of head cement right here, this UV resin. Not like a tiny little dry fly where you have gotta be really careful putting it on there. This one you can put a big huge clump. And that has got a big lump on the bottom, so let me try to smooth that around the front. I mean, I want a big head, but I don't want it lopsided. Okay, I think that'll work right there. Let's go ahead and put our torch on it. And there you have it, the llama. Pretty cool streamer. I think this thing's going to be pretty effective with that muskrat wing. So that's it, everybody. I appreciate you watching. Y'all take care, and we'll see you next time.